Chapter 1 It was not long after dawn that Captain Hornblower came up on the quarter-deck of the Lydia. Bush, the first lieutenant, was officer of the watch, and touched his hat but did not speak to him. In a voyage which had by now lasted seven months without touching land, he'd learned something of his captain's likes and dislikes. During this first hour of the day, the captain was not to be spoken to, nor his train of thought interrupted. In accordance with standing orders, hallowed by now with a tradition which is likely to accumulate during a voyage of such incredible length, Brown, the captain's coxswain, had seen to it that the weather side of the quarter-deck had been wholly stoned and sanded at the first peep of daylight. Bush and the midshipman with him withdrew to the lee side at Hornblower's first appearance, and Hornblower immediately began his daily hour's walk up and down, up and down the twenty-one feet of deck which had been sanded for him. On one hand his walk was limited by the slides of the quarter-deck carronades, on the other by the row of ring-bolts in the deck for the attachment of the carronade train tackles. The space of deck on which Captain Hornblower was accustomed to exercise himself for an hour each morning was thus five feet wide and twenty-one feet long. Up and down, up and down paced Captain Hornblower. Although he was entirely lost in thought, his subordinates knew by experience that his sailor's instinct was quite alert. Subconsciously, his mind took note of the shadow of the main rigging across the deck and of the feel of the breeze on his cheek, so that the slightest inattention on the part of the quartermaster at the wheel called forth a bitter rebuke from the captain, the more bitter in that he had been disturbed in this, the most important hour of his day. In the same way, he was aware, without having taken special note, of all the salient facts of the prevailing conditions. On his awakening in his cot, he'd seen, without willing it, from the tell-tale compass in the deck over his head, that the course was northeast, as it had been for the last three days. At the moment of his arrival on deck, he'd subconsciously noted that the wind was from the west, and just strong enough to give the ship steerage way, with all sails set to the royals, that the sky was of its perennial blue, and that the sea was almost flat calm, with a long, peaceful swell over which the Lydia seared and swooped with profound regularity. The first thing Captain Hornblower was aware of thinking was that the Pacific in the morning, deep blue overside and changing to silver towards the horizon, was like some heraldic blazon of Argent and Azure. And then he almost smiled to himself, because that simile had come up in his mind every morning for the last fortnight. With the thought and the smile, his mind was instantly working smoothly and rapidly.